crafty friends i'm so excited to, uh, to come to you with a new process video this is a brand new uh very new because i've never used this type of technique on my uh, quote journal and this is a mixed media project um the last page on this journal it is completely full and i have a plan for this journal and i'm still a little um unsure if this is what i want to do I'll tell you a little bit more about it here in a minute. I just want to get caught up. <laughs> um, the theme for the quotes this month is freedom. This is, we're in July and um, it is very appropriate, I think, because it's, you know, 4th of July this weekend or last weekend, actually. So the quote that I'm going to be working on today is about freedom, not the kind that you might be thinking. So I'm starting by prepping my background with gesso. Whenever you're going to work with materials that are very liquidy and will make your pages warp, gesso is your number one layer to protect your paper. Um, the colors that I've selected, and there's tons and tons of color, and you will see that. These are by Prima Marketing, and this is some of the Fina Bear uh, collection. There's some shimmer paints and some um, different type of iridescent kind. I had selected a certain pattern. I had an idea and uh, something, you know, specifically in mind that I wanted, a special technique of coloring and that I've seen kind of on different types of whether it's people creating their art or even uh, pattern papers. And so I was trying to imitate that. The paint, These types of paint are very what's the word see-through there um, of course I can't think of the word right now um, they're very see-through they're very um, when you <clears throat> put them on they're, they're um, again they're very see-through <laughs> I don't know what the word is it's translucent that's the word I had to stop the video and think about it because I didn't want to sound not very bright <laughs> so it's they're very translucent so uh, when you put them on your paper, you can still see that because I think of their shine, that's why they are very translucent. And so that was kind of um, stepping out of my comfort zone and trying to work with these. I think these are perfect for different types of projects. Maybe, I don't know that I might keep using these on paper projects because you will see that I make a very, uh, very large change a significant change in this layout here in a minute so i'm still going this is the technique that i was talking about a lot of um, designers are using this you know where they put big uh, color uh, sections on the background and then they come back with different brighter colors and do this little brush strokes effects and i do like it but for some reason you know, as I look at this video several times uh, over and over, I realize this, the original look that I'm doing right now, I wasn't too happy about it. And I don't know if it's one because of the colors and two because of the types of paint that I use. So I think I'm going to give this uh, technique a try using different colors and different um, uh, types of paint. So here is what I'm talking about. Once I was done drying the project, it, you, you saw that it was very shimmery and I didn't, I didn't quite like it. It wasn't exactly what I had in, in my mind when I was working on this. I wanted a more soft uh, background. So what I did here is again, I used gesso, but I diluted it with water. So kind of create like a, um, white wash. We use that in, you know, you've used that when you paint furniture, it's called a whitewash. And so I started to do the same and I, I liked it a lot better. You see how muted the colors muted, is that the right word? But you know, a lot less bright. And the girl that I had chosen, it was from a magazine. I was looking for a girl that her arms were open, like more of her back, uh, not her, the front of her and her arms were wide open and I could not find an image on a magazine, but I found this one and I thought I can make this work. So I cut her out of the magazine. I had this be this beautiful butterfly and that one was from my Maggie Holmes collection. And so I'm using some gel medium to glue the girl to the background, to the page there. 
and she was the perfect size. That was the other reason why I ended up choosing her. And um, so because I did a white wash of gesso again on top of the colors, it was also prepping the surface for more color and adding all these other things that you'll see me add. So I'm very carefully, I cut the butterfly because I wanted to add kind of like wings. And I'm using my little brayer there. I actually had to go look up what the word was for this tool because I totally forgot. So that's a brayer tool. And I have two, one that's covering paint and I kept this one clean. And so anyway, so I cut the, the wings and added them to the background. And I've been playing around with, uh, I knew I wanted to use flowers. And so I tried different flowers that I had and nothing, uh, I didn't like any of them. So instead I decided to paint my own flowers, which was great because again, uh, adding that whitewash prep the background to uh, be able to add more paint. So once again, and I did this again just to show you several things. One, um, so you can see how mixed media is very forgiving and you can, uh, fix mistakes and even mistakes don't actually look like mistakes and we shouldn't talk about mistakes because I think that there is no mistake well there is who am I kidding there are some things that you can do like spilling something that's a true mistake spilling something uh, you know if your brush full of paint falls that's a mistake but in this case me covering the background with the whitewash to make it more muted uh, was a way of again mixed media can't fix uh, or you know make all you can make alterations and changes even though you might already uh, feel that you were finished so the yellow paint that I started using was very translucent and I forgot uh, a lot of times that will happen uh, when you want something bright. So here's another tip for you. You start with a white background. So I painted my circles using just white acrylic paint and that's the base. And it's almost, I don't know how to describe it. It's like adding a slipped uh, underneath a very see-through dress. Wow, I just came up with that. <laughs> but it's like that, you know, the, the, the paints, uh, are coming through so you you want them to be solid so you add a white uh, in this case circle underneath and then you add your paint on top and that makes the colors look very very solid so I'm using several colors and this is acrylic paint and you can see there uh, my color palette is again yellows pinks turquoise and some darker pinks so two different shades and two different shades of turquoise just to kind of things keep things you know in a rhythm and so I am just you know selecting where I'm going to put my circles where I'm putting my colors I am very conscious about what goes next to what uh, you know try to keep things not two colors or two let's say in this case flowers not to have two flowers of the same color on top of each other so I grab different paints and just very randomly uh, just add the paint in a circle motion and if the white shows through that's actually perfect because that kind of gives it again that flower style um, that you see everywhere which is circles within circles and different colors um, that make it more look like I guess petals. So I'm using, that's an ink, it's actually very watery ink, very strong, and I use just a little dab in the center of each of the flowers. And then, um, again, I was trying to come up with, for some reason I couldn't find all my, uh, my other paints. I have them in another bucket and there was a lot of stuff on top and so I didn't want to have to dig things out. I need to find because my my on my desk I have a lazy Susan and it's actually a three tier lazy Susan. I don't know if you guys saw that uh, when I posted on Instagram and it's filled with paints and spray inks and all kinds of stuff. So I ran out of space. So I need to either kind of go through it and only keep exactly what I'm using and get get put away other things that I'm not using as much. 
So after I did the centers, I go ahead and grab again. This is in very, very dark purple. It's actually not black. I, for some reason, I'm loving this because it's not black, but yet it, because it's so dark, you can use it as black. And that one is by Prima Marketing. Again, one of those Fina Bear, um, very shimmery paints. And so I'm adding a little bit more details to the circles of the flowers. And now I am starting to love how this is looking. And um, when I chose this girl, the one on the, on the photo, <laughs> do you see the, the dark uh, wrinkle areas on the dress? You will see um, what we're gonna do with that or what I'm gonna do with that. And it was so perfect that her dress was a, to me, a blank canvas. So here I am going back with some white paint. I zoomed in so you can see kind of what I'm doing and then just going back on a circular motion, adding more details to those beautiful flowers. And now I'm kind of obsessing over them and I kind of want to paint more and turn them into digital images because that's my new kick. I want to turn everything I draw into a digital image and maybe even share it on my blog. I just share something there. I knew a um, sketch that you can download. It's one of my sketches for a double spread layout. Okay, let's get back to this over here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm added a few more flowers and I'm letting those circles dry. In the meantime, in the meantime, this is what I meant by the dress being a white canvas. I was kept thinking and thinking, I gotta do something to that dress. So I go back uh, with that same yellow, but you can see here, and the reason why I pointed out those wrinkles or shadows on the dress is because you can see that even though I am painting, this, this acrylic paint is so translucent that you can see right through it. And in this case, because I wanted it to stay translucent, I didn't cover her with white paint first. I left it the way it was, which let the uh, shadows of the dress come through, which is perfect because it just adds that more dimension to the dress. So now that I'm letting the dress dry, I'm going back to the flowers because now those are dry. And another tip that I have is when you're uh, painting, always try to remember the direction in which you're painting so that your hand won't rub off any of the wet paint. So you'll see me turning my book upside down so that I don't, by mistake, with my hand rub some of the wet paint. And a lot of the times I use my pinky and I, there is a section, it goes so fast that you can't see it, but I show you that I put my pinky as an anchor, not my whole hand. So it's only the pinky that uh, that's touching the, the surface of the paper just in case. So now uh, I go back to the dress and let the other circles dry and then of course there I show you very briefly it went so fast that I was showing you how I'm only using the pinky to anchor my hand and I'm not putting my entire uh, palm of my hand back on the paper. So um, I do this flower pattern effect it's just five little dots in a circle and I loved it it turned out so beautiful and of course matchy because everything has to match and if you pick a color palette and you stick with it throughout your design everything will just look so um, cohesive and you know matchy so uh, now I'm letting the flowers the little tiny ones dry and I go back to the other ones and you see how I was turning my my journal upside down to um, just to make sure I wasn't, you know, messing up with the flowers or the wet paint. So I'm making them be the same as the ones at the bottom. And there is some changes that I do. Um, once I finish the layout, I decide to make a couple of changes that you don't get to see because my camera was uh, running out of film or, or space. Film, <laughs> yeah. So I... I will show you, you'll be able to see the changes that I made and, and it's basically on these leaves that I'm painting. I sped up this part of the video so you could see how quickly uh, I was painting those leaves 
in that bright and strong green. See the difference in paints? I did not need to add uh, white uh, underneath. This was just very solid and I don't know what to call it, strong paint that it just covers everything, not translucent at all. So I do make some changes to the leaves and what it is is just like I added the white to the flowers. You know how I went around with just a little bit of white paint? I did the same to the leaves and just add a little bit of white highlights on top. And I think I added two more flowers. There's a section there at the bottom that it's just telling me there's something missing here. And so I add a couple more flowers um, to complete what I was after. So now I'm going back to the dress and added some green little centers to each of the flowers just to make it, you know, look finished. And I'm going to be coming to the end, guys, of this video. You will see that I uh, handwrite the quote and, um, and I used that paint. And now I wish that I would use watercolor instead because it was very hard to make thin lines but it still came out okay. So I'm practicing my handwriting, so I'm happy about that. Guys, I hope you liked this tutorial. I am obsessing. I stayed up very late last night looking for more cutouts from magazines, so I'm hoping to be doing more. And I didn't get to tell you what my idea is uh, for this um, journal. So very quickly, I hitting 10,000 followers on my Instagram and I feel like maybe as a giveaway I will be giving away this completed journal. Can you let me know on the comments if you think that is a good idea, if you think that people might be interested, you might be interested in winning this finished journal? Let me know. Thank you so much guys for watching. Wait for the close-ups at the end. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. I hope you get to get your finger covering paint today. Until next time. Bye.